Hi everybody. In today's lecture we're going to look at a special kind of refraction and that is something called a critical angle. Now what we've seen is that if something like light goes from air to water that ray will bend towards the normal. So what we see here is n goes up I go from a low index to a higher index. I bend towards the normal. Okay. Now, but of course, I can make my theta 1 bigger and bigger and bigger. And as theta 1 gets bigger and bigger, theta 2 also gets bigger and bigger. But as big as I make theta 1, I'll always have a theta 2. So for example here, as I go from air to water, as I keep making my angle of incidence bigger and bigger and bigger, my angle of refraction will always be smaller. So even as I get all the way down here to 89, oops, you know, 89.9 degrees, I still get some refraction into the water. So I almost can't have an area where I don't have refraction. But what happens when you go the other way? If I go from the water to the air, my light ray bends away from the normal. So as n goes down, you go away from the normal. Now, that means that theta 1 is always going to be smaller than theta 2. So eventually, there must be a point where I make theta 1 so big that theta 2 goes right along that particular boundary. And that point is known as theta c, the critical angle. As light travels only from a high to low, is the maximum angle before it will be actually reflected back. And the way we calculate this angle is a ratio of the inverse sine of n2 over n1, where n2 must always be the smaller value. So if we look at that, if I reverse the materials here, as you can see here, theta1 is smaller than theta2. And eventually I can get to a point where my refraction ceases to exist. And that's kind of weird because it's shining, these are two materials it could pass through, and it's getting to a point where it will not even enter the air. It is completely reflected back into the water. Okay, And so once I go beyond this critical angle, and once I exceed this critical angle, all I get is reflection back into the material. And so what that's known is, is once your angle exceeds the critical angle, is you get something called total internal reflection. So let's see how we use this equation. Let's say we want to determine the critical angle between air and water. Air and glass. And for fun, water and glass. Well, the critical angle equation, theta c, is the inverse sine of n2 over n1. So, the inverse sine, well, air is 1, water is about 1.33, and that gives you about 48.8 degrees. Now, here's the nice thing about this equation. You almost can't do it wrong. If I tried to put in the inverse sine of 1.33 over 1, my calculator is going to return an error, because you can't do that. If I do it for air and glass, the inverse sine, well, the smaller number is always on top, 1 over 1.5. That gives me around 41.8 degrees, okay, a little smaller. Now, water glass. Okay, well, water is 1.33 and glass is 1.5. So if I'm going to do 
the critical angle, I have to take the smaller number, 1.33, over the larger number. And that gives me about 62.5 degrees. So, let's test that out. Air and water, somewhere around 48 degrees. Yep, right around there, right around near 50 degrees as we hit that critical angle point. Um, air and glass, well that's going to be smaller. As you can see, I can go smaller and smaller and smaller, get to around 41 degrees, and that's right around where my critical angle is. And then finally, glass and water. Well, I have to start from the big number and go to the smaller one, so water has to be down here. And this says around 62 degrees. And that's about right. So, there it works. Okay, so that pretty much concludes our lecture on the idea of a critical angle. Uh, again, critical angles occur when light travels from a high index refraction to a low index, the only way it can occur. And uh, if that angle, when you hit the critical angle, will no longer refract. Uh, once you go beyond the critical angle, you have that thing called total internal reflection. All right, we'll see you next time.